Okay. Now it, we are ready to go. <laughs> Good. Okay. Good morning again. Um, first of all, um, any questions from what I said this morning, from the, the short presentation this morning? Any questions? No. Good. So, um, then here's the repo. Uh, do, do, do. I will paste it here. Okay, so you can follow uh, the presentations and then there are all the links and such. So just go there, please. <clears throat> uh, I ask again, was anyone able to, to download the data? Okay, and the code, everything, good. Okay, so now the presentation is this one, the third one on Thursday. <clears throat> if you click there, you will get this. Um, I will close here so we do everything together. Good. Okay, then. Uh, let's start. You already know me, so I don't introduce myself or anything. And let's just... Um, go again through the overview and the data. Um, so we will first um, use an extension from GRASS.js to import species records. We will work with uh, a mosquito species called Aedes albopictus. It's an invasive mosquito in most of uh, Europe and US, and also it's also reaching um, Argentina, for example. And the problem with this species is that it is a competent species for uh, diseases, human diseases, such as West Nile fever and dengue fever. Okay? Um, so it's like the cousin of Aedes aegypti, the main vector of dengue fever. Um, so that's why it's a relevant species in uh, disease ecology. That's why we are interested in this one. Um, and um, after that, we will create random background points. Why we call it background points? Because the idea is to use Maxent um, as an algorithm to predict species distribution. And in Maxent, you don't use really like presence and absences, but you only have like the you only you are only certain of the presences. And the rest are just considered background. So it can then be either presence or absence. Um, I don't know if any of you have already worked with uh, species distribution modeling. Yeah, good. Um, all this will be within GRASS, okay, within GRASS session. Um, there are also packages in R to, to download uh, records of species. But since this is a tutorial of GRASS, we'll do the as much as we can in grass, and then we move to R, okay? <laughs> um, and then we will use this data set, this MODIS LST daily data set, from 2014 till uh, December 2018. So it's five years of daily LST data. That's why it's so heavy. And we will try to extract different variables, especially some variables that um, after reviewing literature, we can say that are relevant for the mosquito development, okay, for different stages of mosquito development. Um, and let's hope that it, everything works. <laughs> and after we create all these raster layers that in the end we will aggregate, yeah, um, we will move, in, move to R and read our data there, like both the records of the species, the background points, and all the raster data that we have generated. And there, you will need to install Maxent, which is basically download a zip file um, and put the, the bat file within. Uh, then we will put the, 
the path to the bat file uh, in the command, and that's it. So it's super simple. Uh, then we will run the uh, species distribution model. We will do some model evaluation and visualization. Of course, when we reach this point, I will then comment some other extra steps that we are probably missing, but this is like just an exercise. But as you know, and as, as Hannah and Madeline has, uh, have told us, like there's this variable selection, model selection, and such that we will be omitting here, okay? And model validation with independent data that we will be omitting here just to fit into two hours <laughs> slot. Um, but those are also super important steps, okay? I assume that um, most of you already know a little bit of GRASS and a little bit of temporal, temporal framework that I at least commented yesterday in the morning. Um, if not, I put here the link to, uh, to yesterday presentation so you can have a look. But I will try to explain as much as possible all the commands and things like that, okay? And please ask questions whenever they pop up. Um, okay, I'll, this is the mosquito. <laughs> Finally, a picture of an animal. Um, and this is just a quick view of the data. Again, this will be our uh, study area, okay, northern Italy. That's where um, a lot of West Nile, uh, West Nile fever cases uh, occur every year. Um, and that's why we just pick that area, okay? Because also there are uh, records of mosquitoes. <clears throat> Okay, and uh, this I hope you have already done. And now let's start grass then. So I open a terminal. Okay, uh, if you have downloaded the zip file, yeah, the LST data. Um, it's a ready-to-use location, okay? So we have to unzip it within the grass data folder, and eventually you will get a location named Eulaea with two map sets, Italy, LST, Daily, I think uh, you might have, or if you downloaded yesterday, the name was a bit longer. But, yeah, yes, there's anyway the rename button so you can at least shrink the name a bit. Um, so the idea is we start grass in this map set, okay? In the Italy LST daily map set. <clears throat> I get a lot of notifications, but don't be scared. Nothing serious. And I will organize this a bit. Okay then. <clears throat> As yesterday, just first explore a bit uh, the data we have. Okay, so you will see that you have all these maps for <laughs> LSD, <laughs> okay. There's a lot of maps. Daily? Eh? Daily it's a daily series. LST average per day. And yeah. So the original reconstructed series is four per day because are the, those are the four overpasses of MODIS, MODIS satellites. And this is an average of those four overpasses. And so double click on one of them and we can display. <clears throat> okay. What we need to do then, as yesterday, we'll, okay, let's see if someone from yesterday recall, uh, recalls what do we do first. When we start working in grass, what is the first step? Chan, 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 chan. We said what first? Computational region. 
and if needed, a mask as well. Perfect. So, you know the command to do so, but we can also do it from here, right? Right click, and we can say set computational region from selected map. Okay. Or align computational region to selected map. With that one, we are sure that the resolution of every other output raster will be exactly the same than this map, okay? Than the map that we are setting it to. So we click there. And what we can do is in the terminal, just print it. G region minus P, okay? So here we see the boundary box, okay? North, south, south, west, east. The resolution, 1,000 meters and number of rows and columns and cells, okay? Good. Let's go back to the presentation. Yeah, okay, so this is what we just did. It's the same with which map uh, we set it because they are all the same in this case. <coughs> and so the next step is just to start importing species records and creating the background points is to install this extension. G extension v in pygebif. So it's using a Python library to read the data from this database. Database I will show you. You can go here, gbif.org. So this is the database. And if you want, instead of using grass, grass there, and actually the module is a wrapper around the library that basically is an API to connect to this database and download the data that you want. But here you can just type Aedes albopictus. And then you get everything that is there for Aedes albopictus. For example, global compendium of Aedes albopictus occurrences. And then here you see where, where people has reported that this species is present. Okay? Some of them might be just um, citizens reporting. Some others are scientists. Some other data comes uh, from publications and so on. So all this database in the end can be filtered by uh, many things, like who reported, the date, uh, the place, of course, um, the quality, like if it was checked or not checked, especially the coordinates and such. So for example, well, I don't, maybe there are islands here in this scale we don't see, but sometimes it's common to see uh, points without coordinates that by default get zero, zero. So you see them where equator meets the Greenwich Meridian. <laughs> but apparently not in this case. Okay, so basically this is what we will be doing by calling the command. Just querying the database and getting the data. Okay, so um, did you install the extension? probably you will need to first or to also install this uh, library. But you can do like this with pip install pygif, pygebif. Please tell me if there's any problem. Okay. <coughs> so once there, <coughs> this is the command, how it looks, um, the commands we will use then this, is will, this will be the output vector, okay? Just Aedes, Salvo Pictus. Um, and here we are querying the database. So what we want is this species from, we are asking from 2010 till 2018, okay? Um, because why 2010? Originally, um, we will 
we were going to use LSD from 2010 till 2018, but it was really, really big data set, and then some uh, processing would, I don't know, take maybe 15 minutes, and it didn't make sense. <laughs> Because it were like 3,000 maps, it was like too much. So I shrink it a bit. The problem is that if I put 2014 here, then I got something like only 20 points. And like this, we get 80. So we have a, a very small mismatch then. Um, OK, so we run this one. <coughs> I have it open uh, here. I will need to set uh, minus minus all. Yep. Yes, uh, in the presentation there was the link for the graph script and the R script. So you can just then copy paste into the terminal. For Windows users, you will have to remove the backslash. Uh, tu -tu -tu. Let me increase this. Is that OK? Oops. OK, I don't know. It used to work. Ah. <laughs> okay. What I will do now is G extension. Good. So we wait a bit. And I got the date. Now, how, this, how does this command know where? Because I didn't say anything about where I wanted the data from. What do you think it's using? as to define a spatial filter. The region, exactly. So by default, it search for records in the computational region, in, the, in that bounding box, okay? I don't need to specify anything, it's just within the module, it's settled within the module, okay? Um, so let's have a look at them. We go here. <coughs> I had a salvo pictus, apply, and those are the points that we get. We can change symbols to something bigger, something like eight, and maybe colors as well, like whatever, right, select. Okay, good. So these would be, or these are, the presence points. Now we need to generate background points, okay? Back to the code, or to the presentation, what you prefer. Then we don't want points just next to the presence. We don't, we don't want a background point randomly um, falling in the same exact position of, as a presence, okay? So what I do is I took the longest distance of flight recorded for this species, with it, which is like 1,000 meters, and then I make a buffer to each one of these points, of these presence points, okay? And then with that, I will create a mask, okay? <clears throat> 
And then let's do this one. B buffer. Look. Um, since I already have the maps. <laughs> Ew. Uh, here you have to put this. Okay. Now let's see how it looks like. We will open this vector now. So I add this buffer, apply. Uh, to lines, two colors, in maybe some violin. So if we zoom, ah, okay, I put two. Yeah, okay. So basically, we have the presence point and the buffer. The idea is that no background point should fall in this area, but outside. Okay. <coughs> okay, so now we create this mask to limit the background points. So first, I create what I do here is just to first create um, to, 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 to first create not this one, this one, a mask that will put um, one here and null here. Okay, it's pretty much the same that in the map, but then I will convert that into a vector, and so because um, to limit the, the creation of random points, I can only use a vector. So what I do is I don't want any background points in the C because it doesn't make sense. And so what I do is first create a raster equal to this, but it will have ones and nulls here. Then I convert that raster to a vector. And there I have my mask to limit the creation of background points to the land area, okay? So <clears throat> these two steps, create the mask and then vectorize the raster. Uh, I will do something to export. Okay, since I already have all the maps, I just set the override to true, but this is not needed for you, okay? You. Did I change the names? Oh. Ah. Okay. I'm sorry. I didn't have much time to test this one. So please change 2010 to 2014 because that maps that, that does not exist. Okay. I will change here and also here is like B. Okay. Uh, are you guys following more or less? Ah, you don't have the data yet? No. Ah, okay. Ah, okay. Eh? Yeah. Um, just talk before. <laughs> Don't let me continue. 
I wrote command error out without exit. Python set up by Ushiu. But I'll try with another Windows install. I will see that there is no. Um, what if I use this minus minus user thingy? No. No. Command error out. Um, how do you install? No, but you have pip, so it's something else. Yeah, so something else. Uh, so I have the extension from the. Uh, I install the extension, but then uh, it cannot run. Yeah, no. Wait, 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 wait. The yellow thingy. Will region is yes, blah blah. Yeah, yeah but, but this it, is it collects it collects the extension, so it's it goes there and third ah by give by three. What if you do? No. Yeah, you could install but, it. But this is only the extension. Then ah, you that need to uh, do this, pip ah, install, that and that's not working ah, for uh, Only pip install. pip install. Oh, that's a pain. Everyone has errors with pip install by GIF? I don't have a pip. Um, just search how to install pip in Windows. I pff, no idea. Uh, yeah. But um, <laughs> this shouldn't be a problem. Mm -hmm. It's strange a bit, though, because yesterday it was, uh, was everything yes. was working properly. So, I have really no idea. so you must have Marcus. Yeah. This is a compression error, but it yeah, with seven six one. Yeah, but 761 shouldn't be a problem with SDDS, no? Because it's already there. Okay, so I have to simply recompress it. Oh. But in 761, it was the default. Um... Diversity of problems now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, mainly dealing with outdated installation. Yes. If you, yeah. And I think PyGIF is like, it's no longer there for Python 2, and then. Yes, but how do you install? How do you install pip in Windows? No idea. In Windows, it's very easy. There's uh, in OSGEO for Windows, there's uh, PI3 PIP. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because the PI, the PI GIF, but it's no longer there for Python 2. Yeah, because Python 2 is basically dead. Yeah, but they are using 7.6, and so they need Python 2 version. So um, you can check in the um, OSGEO Live. Um, remember, you install through OSGEO Live. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, give me the install, like the, the installer. Yeah. Administrator. OK, I think you have to go there, yes. And yeah, go, 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 uh, go. Okay, and now I think it's in libraries and search for pip, Python pip or 
something like that. Beep. Okay. Um, no, but they are there. Keep and keep. Maybe let's see what options you have. Reinstall, uninstall, keep, reinstall. <coughs> and also this one. Ah, okay, I know. Um, I know. You give me the OSGEO, OSGEO gel. Where is it? Um, here. Here. Ah, you mean that. So, pip install by gbif. Okay, the same. So, pip three install by gbif. Ah, but it is there. Which? Pip three? No. Maybe I should bash the pip. Exit. Pip three. Which? No. 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 Okay. But that's not going into the I don't know, maybe it reads it. I have no idea. I'm just using the new Maybe what I can do is in the installer I uninstall the normal pip. No, but mm, no. Just go with next and see, but it will reinstall everything, and it doesn't make much sense. Um, but anyway, what we can do is then I just give you the vector then. Yeah, yeah. That I think because it's like not connecting or something, because you said data request for fail. Are you online? Yes, I'm online. Mm. It's like it's not finding it or something. Okay, so you yeah, you were able to install, yeah, but then it's, it's not, not connecting. Yeah. Okay, so then I can... Yeah, okay. So what I can do then to avoid all these issues is just... I export the vector and I put it on the repo, and then you download it directly from there as a grass, a grass package, grass pack. No? Okay, let's do like that so we can continue, otherwise it will take forever. And so I do... Bpack in. Um, I test... Valbo Pictus B. Out. So now I put it in the repo and you can download it. Um, let's go here. This one, like this. No, 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 what am I doing? Get up. First four. Data, paste. Um, open terminal here, cd, dot, git, pull, okay, now, okay, status, okay, git, git, dot, Okay. 
Okay, see, uh, if you go now to the repo under F5 and under data, you will have this IDS Alupictus B pack. Okay, so just download that one. Yeah, or instead of using Maxen, we can just run a random forest. And yeah. If you don't want to install it. But it's just downloading the package and you don't have to compile or anything. So download this one and then. Yes. And then within grass, what you do, I will show you from the GUI. Uh, I think it's in import vector. Did you all get the, the vector? See, si. no, no, don't open it, just Okay, I cannot show now, but just go to the GUI. If you all downloaded the package, the pack, this Aede Salvo Pictus pack, um, go to the GUI, and in under file, there's vector uh, import, and then v unpack. And there you said like where you browse, where the file is, and then you put the same name without the pack part. Okay, <laughs> I cannot show. Uh, nice. It just, I don't know, I don't know what to do. HDMI. I don't see neither my screen nor this one, okay, no. It looks pretty awful. I hope it. Okay. Um, I need to do something because I lost my screen. And, um, Okay, so repeat once more, import vector data, uh, unpack vector map, okay? Now with that one, there you will have to run <coughs> So you will have to run this, the buffer, and then create the raster map, convert it to vector. Okay? To avoid that any background point um, is in the same, exact same location or the very close surroundings of a presence point. Yes. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I already changed that one. Okay. So I go on s because otherwise we won't reach the, the interesting part. Okay. Did you create the mask? Yes. You run that. Okay. Then what I do is just an overlay so as we did before uh, yesterday with the LST and the buffer around the city, we do again. 
So we just make a difference between the vector covering the, the land and the, the, the surroundings for the presence points, okay? So I will get a vector with some holes. Okay. And then I use this V random to generate 1,000 background points and check that I use this restrict just to the vector that we created. Okay, so in this way we won't get any uh, background point in the C. Okay, any random point in the C. Okay, and now we can also display the background points. Why do you speak in Spanish? Okay. Because the rest of the people... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so those are the background points that we just created. And the mask, in the end, looks like this. The mask that we created is a vector map. And it's this one, uh, mask background, apply. And you see that it has holes. Okay, so if I remove all the rest, you see it has holes where the presence points are. Okay, it's just to avoid that. Um, good, so that is settled. Were you able to run these commands? V random. What is the problem, Alberto? Um, the, compression, the compression issue. Ah. Okay, I work on it. It's com compression. Now, but the point, uh, I cannot open the uh, Okay. <laughs> but. Yep. Okay. Uh, did you browse to it? Uh, yes, so like this and first okay, so it's not the right grass data. Uh, no, wait, do not put it there. Just put it in geodata or something like that because this I also tried that but I put it into wherever else, it doesn't matter. Okay, open, and put an output name. Oh. Oh. So write aedesalbopictus underscore b, and then you get the output name. Okay, run. You. File could not be opened successfully. Huh? Then maybe the slide. This is just a bit crazy. This is maybe the Windows. Or the Python. Read error file could not be opened successfully. Maybe I just <sighs> Yeah. Sorry, sorry. I think almost all three 
of us are, are stuck at, at the same point. Just the adding of uh, the Albo Pictures data. Yeah. Uh, which I you download it. I downloaded and I brought it here. Where yes. I put it in a folder. Um, no, put it in a folder outside grass. Oh, outside grass. Outside the grass data, yes. Okay. Just under documents, it doesn't matter. Okay. Based. Okay, now go to import, file, import vector, vector map, import vector map, unpack, browse to the file. That one, okay. Now output settings. I had a salvo pick to write the write the name. No, 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 no spaces in maps names. Okay, just for um, to avoid you any issues, albo pick to we just keep the same name as in my scripts. Okay, done. So just go to v unpack. Okay. Okay. Um, now it's uploaded. So we have to wait for them to. But you compress with. I think I told you. They didn't have problems with the others yesterday because it's as a set lib instead of STDS. <laughs> but it's supposed, it was supposed to be default in 7.6, so I really don't get what's wrong. OK. Um, OK, now the data should be right. And you have the vector and everything. <laughs> uh, were you able? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Okay, good. <laughs> that was a happiness expression. <laughs> okay, now let's move to the time series part. So we move on because we have like just one hour left. Um, so this this kind of these steps you already know. Uh, some of you from yesterday. Um, and so took took. Okay, and so we go through the creation of the time series now. Okay, for this we use the create, same as we did yesterday. We generate a list with all the maps and save it into a file. And since it is just daily data, we have enough with putting the start date and the increment, saying, okay, this is daily, this is regular, increase every day. And we uh, make it clear that it's interval data. Okay, so the intervals are one day. Um, let's go. Well, this is exactly not that case because this is a reconstructed LST. Um, but of course you will miss, the, you will have gaps, and then you have, I mean, either you use it anyway, which is not a very good idea, with holes, or you do some reconstruction. What we did in this paper, that you have the, the reference there in the presentation, is to do some, first some temporal interpolation with local weighted regression, and then spatial, so with that we feel we filled some gaps, like the shortest um, time periods, okay? And then the remaining gaps for periods longer than one week were filled with spatial interpolation. So map by map, we were checking if there were remaining gaps, uh, and we were doing spatial interpolation for those. So like that, with the four overpasses of MODIS, since 2000 uh, until 
2018. Well, but that's what I am saying. Okay. This is complete because we did that already. So if you miss one map here, um, you will have to either include a null map uh, in between and then do interpolation, a temporal one with this T rust gap fill. And then you are able to use this one. Or otherwise, your time series will be shifted. Or what you can do, the other option is if you don't want to do uh, temporal interpolation, you will have to create the file yourself with the list of maps and with the date. And so your time series will have a gap. Because if you do the same as we did, as we do here, using just the increment and the, the start date, is it goes regularly. So it's 1st of January, 2nd of January, 3rd of January. But if you were missing the 2nd of January in your list of maps, this won't know. So either you create the, the list of maps or you reconstruct that map. Because you provide the start date and the increment. Yes, but uh, does it have a way to interpret the, uh, what is the name of the following map? With respect yeah, because you pass the list of maps, of course. So it's an ordered list? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <clears throat> so here, what we do here with glist, I will show you what this command do. So we pass a pattern, okay? And since the map names have the date, this list will be ordered, okay? So this is year and doi, day of year. So you have one, two, three, four, okay? No, it takes the first as first. In this case, it takes the first as the starting date that you provide in the command. And then since you give an increment, the next one will be the next day. So the names of the map have to be given in a way that they are ordered? Not ne I mean, that's the, yeah, that's the best way of working, but not necessarily. If you then find a way to order them, but yeah, of course, it's always better that the name has some information regarding the date that it represents. Yeah. So what we do here is to create a CSV file with those maps, okay, with the full list of maps. <coughs> uh, And then we pass that CSV into T register. Okay, where is my mouse? Yeah. Okay. Good. So now we can check how this time series look like. We do T info, and the name was LST daily. Okay. <laughs> now we have a time series. So remember, it's based in on metadata. It's just the maps that we had already within our map set, but they are just registered in a table with some extra metadata. So. T info gives us this information, okay, the start day and the end, the start time and end time of this time series, that the granularity is one day, that it, it is interval data, the spatial extent, the resolution, the values, okay, minimum and maximum, and the number of maps. So we have 1,826 maps. 
Okay, yeah. Uh, because it will discover it automatically because you say the start and the increment. So yeah. whenever the list of maps finishes, that's the end. And if there is a gap, uh, then that was exactly his question. Yeah, I was I think I was okay, so if there's a gap, you have many, you have at least two options. Okay, if the gap is only like one day or two days or things like that, you can use this trust gap fill command that does uh, that recreates the missing map according to granularity so you have one day uh, granularity then by linear interpolation in time it will recreate that map okay yes tras gap field is only linear um, otherwise you just create if you don't want to do temporal um, linear interpolation you just create yourself the list of maps, and you will have to assign the dates also with a script or something. And then the program will know, the, the T-register will know that there is a gap there. You are not then providing start and increment. You are just providing the list of maps and the start date. Okay? Uh, this we saw yesterday. These are easy cases to register maps. But then when, when it gets a bit more complex, you have the option of providing a file to this T register command, we can provide a file um, with the name of the maps and the start time or start and end time. Okay? <clears throat> and if you want to do a finer work, let's say because you have gaps due to clouds, you do something like that we did in, in that paper or do some spatial temporal interpolation. Because, yeah, linear interpolation is probably not the best choice. Maybe for one missing map, it's fine, but you can use hands, like harmonic analysis of time series, or this local weighted regression, or cre spatial temporal Kriegin. Uh, yeah, that, many options. Okay. So finally, we have our time series. And then we start generating some variables, okay? Um, let me open. Shoot. Desktop. Open. Okay. So, um, we will use another add-on here uh, called rbioclim. And we will generate all the bioclimatic variables that are based in temperature from this list of 19 bioclimatic variables available in WorldClim dataset. Uh, we, will, we don't have precipitation, so we, so we will only generate those based on temperature. Okay? But for that, we need these long-term uh, averages per month. Okay? So we first generate that for the average, minimum, and maximum. And then we install this add-on and generate all these bioclimatic variables. Okay? This is exactly this, the, the same command that we used yesterday, but only it is in a four, in a cycle. Okay? So for every month, we do the climatological averages, the climatological minimum, and the maximum. Okay? If you are in Windows to do this, what you can do um, in the terminal, if you, only if you install through OSGEO for Windows, is type bash.exe, so like this. If you install through OSGEO for Windows only, this is why we suggest this option, okay? You type in the terminal bash.exe, and then it allows to run this kind of um, four cycles like this. Or what I did is to type here, control shift plus plus. Okay, and this would be the way to write that four in the PowerShell in Windows. Okay. <clears throat> so, 
I run this. <laughs> this will take a while. So it's aggregating like six is 1,800 maps, so like 600 per year or something. Yes, you have, you can. Yes. But the thing is, you cannot use the same command exactly like that because it's regular. If you provide a start date and an in increment, so you say the start date is 1st of January and the increment is one day, the command will regularly add one day uh, to each map that he gets, that it gets. So if you want to get uh, this gap re recorded somehow, you need to provide the list of maps with the start date. And then it just register what is written there. Okay. Yeah, uh, there are many options to register and it will depend on the type of data you have, if it is a time instance or if it is an interval. And depending if you have gaps or not, and if it is regular interval or, or no. Yeah. Sorry, I don't get it. How did you install Grass? I think it's using Qtis. Uh, it uh, comes along. Yeah, then it won't work. So you have to do the Windows thingy, the Windows trick. Um, i show you. I can also put this one in GitHub. So you have to do something like this. Like this one. I don't know why it is open now. Ah. It's clever, but sometimes it's annoying. <laughs> Um, I can I can put this also in GitHub if you want, so you download and copy from there. Otherwise, where is it? Oh, no, I have it in my computer. <laughs> this is a last minute fix. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So I have it here. Then Windows commands control copy. Repos, GitHub, code. Okay. I go to CD repos. Keep. That's a way of uh, determining that I want all the maps whose or which start, which month, which start month is January, February. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, get status, okay. Get add. Commit minus M add Windows command get push. Okay, so it's there now. Uh, not here. 
if you go again here, code, uh, Windows commands, there you have it. If you put it in raw, you can just copy from there. Okay. <clears throat> so, I must continue, okay? After that, we install the extension to generate these bioclimatic variables. So the nice thing of this is that we are using um, a period and data which period is matching much better the data, the occurrence data, the data of the mosquitoes. Otherwise, if we use uh, word clean data, then we are like far away in time with the real actual data of mosquitoes. No? And we know how in 20 years the things have changed. So I installed this extension. Uh, okay, I need to go out from here. Okay. Look. And what I do here is just pass the list of minimum, maximum, and average maps that we just generated before. Okay. And I give a, a prefix to the output maps. So you see we only get the bioclimatic variables uh, that includes temperature. Okay, done. Yeah. And you can estimate like the same way that the uh, word clean does, or you can estimate all the bioclimatic variables, but per year. So instead of um, dividing, let's say, the time into these uh, long-term averages, um, the module can also use, like, the year data. So you could get these 19 variables if you have precipitation per year, instead of these uh, kind of aggregated variables. <clears throat> so if we want to list them, G list, um, Rust, Pattern, uh, word clean. Mm -hmm. Took. So this is what we get because these are the ones like only depending on temperature. Okay, we don't have here precipitation data to estimate the others, like the um, how is it called? For example, temperature in the driest quarter or things like that. We don't have precipitation to do that. Okay. Then, okay, I still have some time. Then other indexes that are uh, nice to have are this annual um, spring warming and autumnal cooling. So it's how fast uh, it gets warm, yeah, when you come out from winter, and how fast or not it gets cold, okay, in autumn. And so for this, we use this t rust aggregate because we are interested in annual values of this uh, slope, okay, and we just select the months that we are interested in either uh, uh, spring or going out of winter, spring, and uh, autumn, okay? Actually going out from uh, summer, autumn. And we will get one map per year, so we will get five maps, but to then put into the model, we will just aggregate and get only one, an average of those. Of course, you can use all the five, but I was just thinking on um, 
getting less variables and not more in this, in this occasion, okay? So, we run this one. So you can see that, again, we use this WHERE clause a lot, the one that we learned yesterday, with, uh, with this kind of syntax, okay? Where the month of the start time is either two, three, or four. So we just filtered by dates. This is super uh, convenient. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> so we can see. So here we get a time series of that, and we can do a T Rust list of that time series. Okay, and here you have. See, it's annual granularity now. And we have only one of this slope per year. Yes, in those months. Exactly. Only in those months that you are interested per year. This is for spring warming, and then we do the same for autumnal cooling. And here, what we do now is do an average of those five maps that I showed you just before. Yeah, because we just want to aggregate this data for these five years to match the, the mosquitoes, and so we make an average. I mean, we can also probably use a different method, like the maximum or the minimum. Here I just put the av average for simplification, I don't know, or by default. But you could, you could even get, I don't know, the standard deviation of, that, of those slopes, okay? Uh, okay, done. If yeah. That's why we use the Rust series. Um, yeah. The output is just one month. One month. Okay, let's see how it looks like. So we see some maps. And it's the first one here. OK. And let's put a legend. OK. So these are the values, more or less. OK. From 4 to 12. That's the, va the average value of the slope. So it seems it goes faster here. Of course, in the lakes, it's super uh, or is less faster, okay, the warming because of the properties of water. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, like in the peaks, in the valleys, it goes faster, and then in the peaks, it goes slower. Okay. Um, now let's estimate then the autumnal cooling. It's the same, but we just, uh, we just pick different months, okay? And then we estimate an average. Okay, now we can do the rest list. Okay, and here we get the list of maps for the cooling. And we can have a look at the raster map. Okay, average autumnal cooling. And see that it's completely different. Now we will estimate the We'll put the proper legend. Okay. 
Okay. So, of course, since it is like cooling, the temperature is going down, the scale is the other way around, okay, and it's negative. <clears throat> Good. Um, I maybe, s I don't know if to skip things. Uh, Yeah, maybe I skip some uh, because I had so many <laughs> examples here. Um, the next thing that I was planning to do is to estimate the start end and length of the mosquito growing season. And for that, we use this R seasons um, extension. And again, for each year, we get first a list of maps and then we estimate how long the season is. And for that, we need like um, um, different values. One is the threshold, okay? So I am assuming here, not assuming, it's from literature, that starting at 10 degrees Celsius, mosquitoes can start thriving, okay? And so I said, with this threshold, it's like, okay, the growing season starts when there is 10 degrees, and it finishes when there is 10 degrees, okay? And the mean length is 150 days, and the max gap, that is like the maximum gap that it is allowed um, to estimate, to consider a map within or out of the growing season. So you can have at maximum a gap of 12 days with temperatures below 10. But if the start and end time are still like above, those, those, that period is still within the season. Okay, you can, you can play with that. And I put 12 because this was like the median uh, lifetime of an adult mosquito. Okay. Um, and then, since the module provides like the start and end dates, actually, more than dates, it provides the index of the map in the list. And what I do then to, to get the length of the growing season is just make a difference of those maps. Okay. Um. So... I installed the What was the um, The minimum, the length of the period. I think the minimum length of the period. So at least 150 days. Five months. Yeah. It's like from previous knowledge. I mean, yeah. I don't think that it, maybe, okay, maybe in some places it could last maybe only 60 days, but... will depend on the area as well. Uh, we can always try. Uh, so I installed the extension. And then, and for this one, I also have a Windows version, I think. Yes. So detect seasons. Um, this one should work. I don't know. I cannot test, so. It's it's in the file that I just put in git in GitHub. Um, so it's a wrap around the years because I need the growing season per year. So you try to find the cold The growing season per year. Cold. This, huh? The cold season? No, why cold? Because it's it's above ten degrees. Ah. That's the default. It's uh, the, the whatever value we put is above that value. If we want below that value, then there's a flag in the module to change it to low to below that value, below the threshold. So you're, you're trying to find the, the period that is above. Yes. Okay. 
And you see, it does this for every year. So even for the leap year for 2016, then we have like 366 months, which is leap year. Okay. And what I do after that is to make an average of the mosquito, of the length of the mosquito season. Again, I have five maps. Okay, so one per year. I want just the average of that, or it could be also the uh, the median value. Okay. For that, I just use since this is not okay. Since the output of this module, our season, is not a time series, so you see the module starts with R. It does not start with T, okay? So I just get a list of maps. I don't get a time series. And then what I use is this R series model that Marcus showed in the first, uh, in the basic intro to GRASS, that is like a simple manager for time series or for data that we think that we know is time series because it allows us to pass a list of maps and it aggregates the stack of maps, okay? So if that, stacks, uh, if that stack is in time, then we get the same functionality as T-Rust series, okay? So I just pass the list of maps that I got from the R seasons and aggregate them with the average. Hmm? No. Because it's just five five maps, no? It, like to go go through the the job of creating the time series, registering the five maps, and then using Tira series is like an overkill. Because for five maps you just pass the list. Okay. Okay. Now let's see how they look like. Uh, dun 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 dun. How were they called? Output average mosquito season. Here, one and two. And why do I get one and two? Because this R season modules provides like the compact season or like like the core season where all the temperatures are above 10, like above the threshold we provide. And then it provides like a longer version of that season and is the one including these gaps. Okay. So let's see the first one. You. So basically it's the same everywhere. For example, this variable is not really useful. Okay. So maybe for this case, for example, we could just either omit or start playing a bit more with the threshold because we set the same threshold, threshold for the whole area. Okay? And our seasons allow to also pass a map with thresholds. Okay? So instead of using the same value for the whole area, we could use uh, pixel-wise thresholds okay? if we pass a map. <clears throat> Let's see if the other map shows any variation. No. So the only variation is here, like in the coast, apparently. And that's it. Let's see if it changes. Yeah, it includes the gaps. Yeah. So no change. <clears throat> Good. Um, okay, I will go through. Yeah. 
So I will get two more variables and then just move to R, okay? Because the growing degree days, it will take forever. So the next thing is to estimate the number of days with LST higher than 20 and lower than 30, because that's like the optimum range for mosquito development. And for that, we use the algebra, okay? So what I do then is, uh, it's just an expression. I say, please register also the null maps with this minus n. So if there's a map in which this condition is never met, please also register it. So create a null map. So I have a full time series without gaps. And what I do is uh, write first the output name, see, t mean higher and lower. And I say, if the LST daily is higher or equal than 20 and the LST daily is lower than or equal than 30, put one, otherwise put null. Okay, so I have like masks, yeah, every day. And then I aggregate this time series that will be daily into a yearly time series, counting the, or, or adding. It's basically, in this case, it's the same. <clears throat> so I count how many uh, of these days with this meeting this condition there, there are per year. Okay? No, it's a bit, a bit, a bit, a lot more complex. But can you do that? Um, s what I think is that you can do, most of the things that you can do with TRAS map calc are already included in the algebra. But you have much more. Okay. But yeah, I think it was first. First, the developer just did a wrapper around R map calc, which is T Rust map, map calc, and then it took a longer time to develop the algebra because it's more complex. And yeah. so, in the end, we have both. But yeah, that's a discussion. Why keeping both? Um, okay. So I first run the algebra command. Oh, it's running. So this will take a while probably because it's it has to evaluate that condition in 1,800 1, maps. So in this case, it does not keep it in memory for ex as, as in Tridal cubes and stars that it only reads uh, when you plot or something. Here it just writes the maps. Anyway, it's pretty fast. <laughs> I guess you are not really following, but are you at least understanding what I'm doing? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah, th this thing, this workshop or tutorial, this is the first time I do it. So you are like guinea pigs <laughs> for this tutorial. <laughs> Sorry. The LST one I have done like uh, five times already or something, so I have it more. <clears throat> well, while that runs, then I tell you what it comes next. So what we will do next, and this is a bit more complex, but I wanted to show you like the potential of the algebra, um, is this one, is to estimate the number of consecutive days. So in the previous command, we are just counting how many times in one year we have a certain condition. But we don't care if those days are split or spread all around the year. Okay, it's just counting how many. 
but for some conditions, we need to know exactly how many consecutive days we have of that condition. For example, freezing temperatures, yeah, or higher than 30, 30 something degrees. Because then if you have like one week or 10 days of freezing temperatures or, uh, or below zero temperatures or uh, higher than 30 something, then the larvae may die, okay? <clears throat> and so it becomes a limiting factor for the populations. Mm -hmm. um, and the command, and for that we first, it's a bit uh, complex the way of doing this, but first you create like an annual mask and you can put like whatever value you want. So with whatever time series we have, we just create a yearly time series. And in this case, I just count it. So the values of those five resulting maps will be 365, 366. For um, an, easy interpre an easier interpretation afterwards, what I did is just replace this 365 or 366 by zero. Okay? Why this? Because this is how we estimate the number of consecutive days. We have the annual mask here, the one that we created here with zeros everywhere. So it's basically like um, <laughs> a tabula rasa, let's say, where there's nothing, okay? And we will be adding. When the condition is met, we will be adding one and adding, okay? So, with this annual mask, yeah, we say, please add where, with it, where the topological relationship is contained. So this is annual, and the time series that we are evaluating is daily, okay? So we have this problem of the sampling, okay? One is annual, but then the other one is daily, so it will be adding, okay? Do you follow me? More or less? Okay. So, and this L means add to left. Okay, so add here. <laughs> um, and add when, if LSD daily is higher than 33, and LSD daily, the day before of each evaluation, is higher than 33, or if LSD daily, the, day, the next day is higher than 33, and the day is higher than, the, the one that is being evaluated is higher than 33. So it considers the, the maps afterwards and the one before, okay? And it, so, and it adds one or zero in either case, okay? If it, met, if it meets the condition, it adds one, otherwise it adds zero. Okay, so it's pretty tricky, but in one command, you do a lot. To program all that in R, I don't know. <laughs> I do in R with Marcella, and it's really complicated. Yeah, I don't know. Um, but this is the, the, the power of the, of the temporal algebra that I was commenting yesterday. It's really amazing, if you really think through it and study it, it's really amazing what you can do with one command. And let's see if, yeah, this is done. So I just finished this part now. The previous one, yeah, here it finished. Yeah, it's 1,800 1, maps, so it yeah, takes away. Yeah. Yes, yeah, because I was um, Wait. saying I was just uh, want to tell one thing. Um, it is parallelized, yeah? But oh, yeah. But all is one CPU only. Yep. So you, want you are right. Answer, you add an additional parameter, which is called n prop, number of processors. Yep. Uh, 
Yes, we will. We will do for the next. I will do for the next one. Were you here yesterday? No. Ah. <laughs> eh, eh. <laughs> okay. Tira is serious. Yeah. Tira series aggregates by default the full time series and outputs one map. So you have one series of monthly data and you want the average of the whole period. Then you use Tira series. But if you want to pass this monthly time series into seasonal time series or annual time series, then you use TRUST aggregate because it has a parameter called granularity. And there you say, OK, from monthly, let's go to three months, four months, one year, five years, whatever you want. OK, so that's the main difference. Um, no, no, not always by default. You can also select a period of time with where condition. Not really. Because in the TRUST aggregate, you also have the where. The main difference is the existence of the granularity in one of them and the not non-existence of the granularity. <clears throat> so let's, let's inspect. Ooh, why is it see this is wrong? This is wrong some oh. Did I run this one? Which one are you talking about? Yes. Okay, I'm not getting what happened here. No, I'm getting all zeros, and that is not really the case. Yeah, um, I don't know. I promise it was not like this. You see, I'm getting all zeros in the counts, but it's really not the case. But it shouldn't matter. No, but I'm using count, so it will only count the valid data. If there are now nulls, it won't be there won't be counted. There is something else, but I'm not really sure what. Top. Okay, just let's just move on. Because it doesn't make sense. So let's go to the example I explained before. So if I create this annual mask, I don't know what's going on. In T-Rust algebra. So here, in the, the one that we will use, we can do n pro and pros. And I can add. Since I have eight, I will have seven. So th it will depend on the number of cores of your machine. And proc. OK, so I get the mask. Now I put zeros instead of the 300 something. And I hope this one works. I don't know what's wrong. Okay. 
And now we run this d rust algebra. Chan 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 chan. So it's evaluating for each annual map the f the full year in the other time series. Okay, it's done. I hope this one has values indeed. Uh, oh, I leave. Uh, I left an old name. It's just like an empty map or a map full of zeros okay. to be able to add. Because if you put null, you cannot add. It will be null. So you have to put zero to be able to sum things, to add things. Yeah? Okay, this is really wrong, and I don't know why. This is again wrong. <laughs> Are you sure the data is fine? But when I ran it, it was, it was okay. I mean, the number of consecutive days higher than 33 was like two, three, maximum eight, one year in 2015. And now I get this, all days were like that. It's really odd. Yeah, so I, I don't know if the, the LST daily. Where are the values? Maybe it's not some Am I using the Kelvin? No, because I replaced it. The Celsius. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, this is Kelvin. That's why it's wrong. I. Okay. I mean, just we can just put the pressure to Kevin and then. Yeah, but the thing is that the next step we should just go to now to R. It won't make sense because at least these variables don't make sense. The others, yes. So we can just move on. Let's go to our studio. Because the data is in Kelvin and not in Celsius. Then add. Yeah, then you add one. Yeah. Ah, you, add. you add one. 
I'm adding, look at the command. Uh, this is the important part. It's adding. Or, yes, or. So you add if the, the, the day you are evaluating and the previous one met the condition, you add. Or if the day you are evaluating and the next one, you add. Sorry for the mess. I will just open the script here, the R part. Uh, doc. So it's easier. You downloaded the the R script, right? R. You have to first load the library. So if you don't have the libraries, you have to install them, and then we just run. Okay, so when you load the library, then you are connected. But you have to open RStudio from the grass terminal. How come it's not installed? I think I prepared this in the other computer. <laughs> and then I decided to bring the small one. <laughs> so the main package I don't have. <laughs> so we will use um, the rgrass 7 library providing the link, the raster library, the simple features, Map view and Biomod too. That's the one that actually does the modeling. Okay. No, Biomod two. No, oh, we have ten minutes. Yeah, I'm sorry. You would have on our web page I had renamed the texting packages from Celsius to Pelin because I thought that there would be the values in there. But there's um sorry, but there's um a readme which contains the formula, which is pretty easy. It's the mod is uh, changing the Celsius data structure, it's not a situation by the form and uh what is it? Uh minus two hundred two hundred and seventy three. Yeah. Yeah, the thing is, originally, um, Marcus provided the Kelvin data. And then I asked, like, please, let's go with the Celsius data, because um, then we, we save one step. <laughs> yeah, OK. Yeah, we were all, this, all in the same situation. OK. Now we load the libraries. Okay. And we will read the vector data as simple features from GRASS. Okay. So first we need to specify that we want simple features because by default it would import SP objects. But simple features are so much nicer to work with. <clears throat> and so we import both the um, points, the presence points, and the background points. Okay? Good. And good. Okay. A quick view we could do map view. Uh, how is it called? Uh, uh, this, and there we have the points. Yep. Okay, 
you open from here, from the terminal of Grass, you open R Studio. So this is what I wrote. And this um, ant symbol, I just wrote because like that I keep my command prompt here. You can also not use it, but then you don't have the command prompt in the grass terminal if you want to go back. Okay, so here are the points. And now we read the rest raster data. And since STARS support is still not done, we have to specify, and simple features is not for, rest, for raster data, we need to specify that for rasters, we will use SP objects. And we get, uh, I think, spatial grids, or yeah, something like that we get. We can check. Okay, so we will import. Check here. This is what I was commenting this morning. Okay, so we use the exec grass command inside R to list all the maps within grass data that start with word clean. Okay, and we will save this list in an object, in a vector in R. And the same for those starting with average, median, and so. Okay. Some of them probably don't make sense <laughs> uh, because, as we saw before, the data was uh, the wrong <laughs> data set, but, well, it doesn't matter. Just an exercise so far. Okay, so here I get the list. Okay, those started starting with average the list, and maybe this, I don't get anything because we didn't reach that part. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, then we just concatenate those lists, just to have a single list, and to be able to import all those maps. So far, we only have a vector with the names of the maps that we want to import, okay? And so what I do is, bless you, I create a list called predictors, an empty list. And then I just cycle over the list. And meanwhile, I also convert them to raster. Okay, because otherwise I get an SP object and I really don't like them. And so I convert to raster while importing. Okay. Okay, so we have in these predictors, now we have a list of raster maps. And we can also visualize, oops, ah, I don't have 16 anymore <laughs> because there are some maps missing. So let's go with three. Okay, and now here in map view, we can easily uh, display the maps that we, the one of the maps that we have imported and the uh, points. Okay, so it's pretty, n for quick visualizations is really good. And it's really fast as well. Okay. <clears throat> so this is more like the data preparation and formatting part. Um, it's only because the BioMod 2 package asks or requires the data in a certain format. Okay, <clears throat> so here I'm just getting the number of presences and the number of backgrounds given, given which is my response variable, and then creating vectors with ones and zeros for like presence and background or absence sometime, <clears throat> and then putting all together. Okay, and then creating um, this data frame with everything. <clears throat> so what I do here is obtain the coordinates. Okay. 
This is why we created a simple features thingy. Okay, and then what I do is stack all the raster maps and put everything together. Okay. How come? That's some automatic checking that the, 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 the module does. So if there is some NA, it removes. It removes the points with NAs. What, what model is it using? Like so in this bio mode, um, tuk, 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 if we go F1, you can use different modules, uh, models. So you can go with GLM. Uh, GBM, gradient boosted something, uh, GAM, uh, artificial neural networks, uh, random forest, uh, Maxent, and some others. Okay, so I plan to use Maxent, but we can also, here we can write RF and run a random forest model. Okay, if you don't, if you didn't download Maxent, you can just put there RF in caps and it will run a random forest model, okay? So um, let's see. Since I am using Maxent, I just tell this. So for Maxent, you just download a zip file and you put it somewhere and inside you have this jar file. And the only thing required by this module is to provide the path to that jar file. Okay, so this is what I'm doing here. It's only like setting th the path to where it should look for the executable file to run the model. If it is random forest, it uses an internal library in R. Okay. <clears throat> I try to be super fast so we can at least see the maps. <laughs> I know we are over time. Uh, so I run the module. Uh, I should have. Okay, what we do here is run five um, five repetitions. Okay, of the same model, we split the data. Use eighty percent for training and twenty percent for uh, cross validation, and estimate. Uh, the variable importance with 10 permutations. Okay, so these are all options um, for this biomod modeling function. Okay, then you can explore whatever, uh, because then each uh, algorithm will have a certain settings. Okay, I could have just maybe run one to make it faster. Maybe I stop it. Okay, I will stop it and just put maybe only two. <laughs> and let's see if we like this. Let's see if it at least goes faster. Yeah. Okay, and what we just explore briefly afterwards are some uh, evaluation measures like accuracy and, and then the rock, so the area under the rock curve. <clears throat> and we run predictions because here the mo oops. Ah, no. Um, because here the model only runs for the points, but then we want to project it for the whole area uh, and so we first do this projection and then the plotting, okay? So the models are done. It, this is just a summary, okay? This is the object with the model. And then we can extract some uh, evaluation data. Okay, so since I did only two runs, 
I get the overall accuracy on the rock. This is not very exciting. <laughs> accuracy is always like high values, but then when you see something else, it's like, hmm, okay. But, well, remember we have a couple of variables that are homogeneous for the whole area, and that doesn't help very much. And then we can also get the variable, the importance for all of them. So ideally we could do some, either before this we could remove variables that are correlated, or, and also then afterwards do some variable selections here, like keep only the, the important ones, like higher than a certain threshold, for example. <clears throat> And it would be great to do what Hannah was telling us yesterday for the, co the cross-validation, because this is just random. <clears throat> it does not have the problem with the polygons, though, because it's just one point here and there, and it splits the data. But uh, it would be nice to say, OK, let's, maybe let's train with the half of the region and then predict the other half of the region or something. Um, okay, and now we get finally the projections. So this takes a bit of time because it's making all the calculations over the raster stack. Okay. And finally we get here uh, the plots. They are super different. <laughs> Okay, for one run and the second run. And know that since this, since this well, the folding is random, what the 80% that you get and the 20% for validation, this can be like really different results. So that's why it's, uh, it's always good to do several repetitions, not only two, because here, which one you choose, no? <laughs> <coughs> And we can also do something like, ah, let's plot only one, for example. Let's keep this one. And yeah. OK. And then we could plot it m much nicer with all the tools that you, lear that you have learned, like team up and such. <laughs> but yeah, we are five minutes over the schedule. So sorry for all the mess. <laughs> But I hope you have uh, like at least uh, got the fl the workflow. I will upload in a few minutes or seconds from now the graduate converted by polygon. So if you are interested, you can send me the precary transcript in the mail. Okay. Okay. Good. Thanks. Uh, yeah, you can also run uh, random forest. So, okay. Yeah, I first tried when I was preparing it and I was running different, more, much more repetitions. The random forest, I was not convinced with the results. And so I went for, for Maxent. But yeah. But we can just give a look. Uh, talk. Okay, well, the a AUC is pretty much the same. So, yeah. And also, BioClim 1 is, again, the most, I oh know, here is number 6. And let's see how it looks like. Yeah, see, it's different. The, like the predicted probabilities are, are lower. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> okay, I hope you have got something. <laughs> Thank you for the patience.